Okay, students, so we are going to start into chapter 9, and uh, we're going to be looking at identities to begin with here. So what I wanted to review real quick is these are the basic identities that you have learned, and these are things that are pretty important to get memorized because you're going to use them quite a bit. So just to review those, uh, make sure that you know all of these identities Reciprocal, Pythagorean, even odd, quotient, cofunction, those are the essential identities that you want to know. Okay, and if I go down, I'll begin to show you what we're going to be doing here. Is one of the things we'll be doing is taking a, an expression that has trigonometric functions in it, and then we'll be simplifying that. We've done a little bit of this already, and then ultimately we'll be going through and verifying identities and working on that in this section. Okay, so this is one of my favorite sections, particularly the verifying identities is something that I really enjoy doing. So what I'm going to do on this to begin with is, as I'm doing these, I'll probably just display these identities because it'll be helpful to you. So we've got cotangent over cosecant, and there's a number of ways you can approach this problem. What I would recommend, if you have a fraction like this, one way to do this is to just start with find an identity that you think might be useful. So if you look at the cotangent, the cotangent is the same as the cosine over sine. So I'm going to replace that with cosine over sine. That's what that whole piece becomes like that. Okay, and then we still have the cosecant. And if you look at that, find an identity that you know about with the cosecant. So the one that I would suggest is the cosecant is 1 over sine. So let's replace that with 1 over sine and then see where it takes us. Okay, so to begin with, just substitute and see what happens. Now what happens on this, you have to understand that that fraction bar right there in the beginning of the problem is really a division symbol. So you could think of this as the same thing as cosine of theta divided by sine theta divided by 1 over sine theta. Okay, well, think about what do you do to divide a fraction. You multiply by the reciprocal, so you could write this as cosine theta over sine theta, divided by is the same thing as the reciprocal. Have that, and then you're ready to finish it up. So what would happen, of course, is sine over sine is 1, so you're just left with the cosine of theta over 1. Therefore, that's as far as you could take that then. Okay, so sometimes they're fairly, sim uh, fairly simple to do. That's one that doesn't have a, a lot involved. So again, what I did was I just utilized the identities. Okay, and we're going to do that as we do each of these problems. Okay, so I'm going to slide this over just a minute here, and then we'll work on this next one. So what I notice on this next one here is you have the even odd identities that would probably come in very useful on this problem then. So I'm going to put this up here just to display this. So notice on this, we're going to, we have all these even odd identities. So if you look at this, we have the sine of negative theta. Well, that's equal to negative sine theta. We have the cosine of negative theta. That's equal to cosine theta because it's an even function. And finally, we have the tangent of negative theta, which is equal to tangent theta. Okay, so what we're going to do on this is just replace. The sine theta, is, sine of negative theta is negative sine of positive theta. The cosine of negative theta is cosine of theta. And then the tangent is of negative theta is just negative tangent of theta. Okay, so remember that the cosine and the secant are even functions, so they're just equal to the function itself. All the other four trig functions are the negative of that uh, trig function. Now we need to see if there's anything we can do. So a couple of simple things I notice is we have a negative times a negative. So that's a positive. So in my next step, I'm just going to write that like that. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to think about is, well, let's see, we have a tangent. A tangent is a sine over cosine. So I'm going to replace that so I'll end up just leaving the sine theta alone is what I'm going to do. And then the tangent, I'm going to replace that with the sine theta over the cosine theta. Okay, and a lot of times on these problems, I never know where they're going to go. I just try something 
and see where it leads me to. And you have to do the same thing. So notice on this, this is really, you can think of this as over one if it's beneficial to you. And the cosines, cosine over cosine is one, so it divides out. So you're left with a sine times a sine. So you'd have sine squared theta. What you're generally going to try to do on these problems is get these down to one trig function. Okay? So look over those. Make sure you understand what I did on that. And then we'll move on to the next page. Pause at any time that you need to catch up and process what I'm doing. So I'll move on to the next page. Okay? So next one we're going to do, I'm going to do a couple of more of these. So let me move my identity diagram over here. And let's focus on this problem. Uh, so we have several things going on. I have a cosine of negative theta. So remember, that's an even odd identity. Whenever you have a trig of a negative angle, that's what you immediately think of. So we're going to do that and work with that identity there. The other thing is the sine of negative x is negative sine x. Okay, so I remember this this way. If it's an even function like the cosine, then that just replaces with cosine of x. If it's a odd function, then it replaces with negative of that trig function like that. The angle always changes signs, and either it stays the same or the opposite as far as the trig function goes. And then cosine of negative x becomes just cosine of x over sine x like that. Okay, so that's what I've done is I've replaced those identities with what they're equal to. All right, now I want you to think about what we have here. Do you notice anything about cosine over sine? If you look at this list of identities you've learned, what do you see? Okay, that's what I hope you see. I hope you see that that's equal to the cotangent. Good, so what you would have is this whole thing right here becomes a cotangent, but there's a negative there. There's that negative that needs to come down. Same thing here. You have a cotangent of x. Now, these are like terms, so it's just minus 1 minus 1 would be minus 2 times cotangent of x. So that would be down as simple as you can take this. What you're ultimately trying to do is try to get it down to one trig function. You can't always do that, but if you can, that, that's the goal that you're going to try to reach for. Okay? All right, so let me move this over just a tad bit here, and let's look at what we got going on on the next one. Okay, so this one, um, what I'll look at a little bit is just see what identities might be useful. Again, I'll just kind of try things on this and see where it leads me. Okay, so with this, let's see what we got here. Okay, I see a couple of th ideas that I have is I have a tangent I know is sine over cosine. So that would be useful. I see a cosecant is 1 over sine. That might be useful. So let's work with that and see where that leads me to. I'm not going to do anything with the cosine. All right? So I like to usually kind of keep sines and cosines in the expression if I can. So what I'll have in the numerator is 1 plus cosine alpha. We're going to change the tangent to uh, sine alpha over cosine alpha, and then we're going to change the cosecant to 1 over sine alpha like that. And that's all the numerator now, and then that denominator, let's also change that to 1 over sine alpha. So again, I'm just plugging equals in for equals. All right, now what do you notice happening, if anything? Okay, the cosines cancel out, that goes to 1, the sines cancel out, so what are you left with in that numerator? Okay, yeah, this whole thing right here, this whole entire numerator right here is a 1, because anytime you cancel out, you just end up with a 1. So you would end up with 1 plus 1 over 1 over sine theta. Now what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to make a decision that, well, that's not really canceling out. Let's just go ahead and change this to um, back to cosecant of theta, or cosecant of alpha. Because remember, cosecant, uh, 1 over sine theta is the cosecant. So let's just change it like that so we would have 2 over cosecant of alpha. Now, you could have left the sign in there. This is just a personal decision I made. So you could do this in your head, but technically this is just 2 over 1 times 1 over cosecant of alpha. And then I want you to notice that... 
um, 1 over cosecant is the sine. So what I can do now is I can just change this to 2 times sine alpha. Okay, and then that's as far as I can take that then. That's probably as simple as you can possibly make that. Okay, so again, use identities until you can get as simple as possible. There's more than one way to do these problems. I just try to do, try something and see where it leads me. Okay, all right, pause the video if you need to. I'm going to have you go ahead and move down the bottom of the page and try the next two problems. Okay, now what I've done on this, or the next three problems, I'm sorry, is I'll go ahead and squeeze this up here so you can kind of see what you're doing on each of these problems. Refer to the identities as you need to. So that should give you room and you can refer on these identities on the videos. I'm going to go ahead and pause and work these out while you're working them out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and display the answers that you should have got. There's probably several ways to get here, but this is just what to me is logical in the way I chose to. If you got to these answers in a different way, as long as you're doing something that's mathematically correct, then you should be okay. So let me explain kind of what I did on this one. The, I got cosecant of x is the answer I wanted you to get to. So I just changed the secant to 1 over cosine. So I did that, and I changed the tangent to sine over cosine. So again, just taking the, the basic identities uh, right here. Secant's 1 over cosine. Tangent sine over cosine. That's what I did. Okay, I realized that this is a division problem. So it's 1 over cosine divided by sine over cosine. So I write this as 1 over cosine times the reciprocal. Cosines cross out. You're left with 1 over sine. And again, notice that 1 over sine is equal to cosecant. So that would be the thought process that I would run through on that, is just uh, use those particular identities. Okay, the next one, what I did is uh, did this. The tangent, uh, tangent of negative theta is, ah, uh, did I miss? No, I'm okay with that. I got negative tangent theta. Cosecant of negative theta is um, negative cosecant theta. And then cosine of negative theta is cosine theta. So I'm using those three identities there. Then what I notice is a negative, uh, a negative times a negative is a positive. So I just wrote the next step like this. The negatives become positives. Okay, then I did this. I changed the tangent to sine over cosine. So I did that. I changed the cosecant to 1 over sine. And I left the cosine alone. So what happens is notice that the sines divide out. The cosines divide out. You're left with nothing but 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. Okay, so no matter how you did that, you would have turned out with one is the simplest that you can do. I think the next one is a little bit harder to me, so I'll show you what I did and what answer I got. Okay, so here's what I did on this, and I'll kind of write out the identities as I go. The first thing I chose to do was just to change the tangent to sine over cosine. I didn't do anything else in the first step other than that. And then what I noticed is the cosines are going to start uh, divide out. So I'm left with sine x plus 1, sine x minus 1, all over cosine squared of x. And there's more than one way to go about doing this problem. I can think of a couple of ways to do this. To me, I went ahead and foiled this. And I did this in my head. You want to learn to do the same thing. What happens on this is the first term is sine squared x, the outside term is minus sine x, and the inside term is plus sine x, and then the last term is negative 1, so those cancel out. So it's kind of beneficial if you can do that in your head. When you have a plus and a minus, that's called a conjugate, and when you foil that out, the, you have a cancellation of your inner and outer term. So what I did is I really multiplied that out, and that became that. Okay, so I'm now down to this point. Then what I did is I looked at this piece right here. I just looked at the sine squared of x. Okay, well, we have the Pythagorean identity that says sine squared of x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So since I had a cosine squared in the bottom, I did this in my head, and you can do the same thing. You can rearrange this identity so it says sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. So what I did is I replaced 
the sine squared of x with what it's equal to. It's equal to 1 minus cosine squared of x, then the minus 1 came down. So that's what I did after I foiled it, is I changed sine squared of x to 1 minus cosine squared x. You'll get to a point where you rearrange the identities in your head, and then you can substitute them pretty easily. So now notice the 1's cancel out. You're left with negative cosine squared over cosine squared. Cosines cross out, so you're left with negative 1. Okay, not 0. Sometimes I'll see students put 0 on that. Any number divided by itself is 1, so you have negative 1. Okay, so pause on this page if you need uh, to review any of these, and uh, then I'll, we're going to go ahead and go to the next page. Okay? All right, so moving on to the next page, you're going to work a little bit more with this. Uh, actually, I want you all to go ahead and do this. I didn't think about this. Go ahead and do number four yourself. So please pause the video, look at my identities, and try to do number four yourself and then you can check your answer. Okay, so if you want to check what I did, you should have got zero if you did this correctly. What I did was this. The cosine of negative x is cosine, so that just changed to cosine x. The uh, sine of negative x, the odd-even identity, that becomes negative sine x. So that's all I've done in the first step. The other thing you want to notice is sine over cosine is tangent, so this whole thing becomes tangent. This whole thing becomes negative tangent, so you're adding a tangent to a negative tangent, you get zero. Okay, that's the way I processed that one and did that. Okay, so those, most of these problems you're going to get down to a real simple answer. One trig function, maybe just a number. That's the idea. Okay, so I'm going to do some additional examples. These might be a little bit more complex. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll run down and look at this number two, and we'll do these two, and then I'll let you work on a little bit more. Okay, so a lot of times on these problems, I really do not have an idea how I'm going to go about them initially. Sometimes I think about it a little bit, and then sometimes I just try something and see what happens. I have a feeling with this one I'm probably going to have to factor. So what you need to know on this, there's more than one way to do this. This thing right here has a common factor of sine squared. It's no different conceptually than if you have something like x to the fourth minus x squared, you take out the highest exponent and you would be left with this. So factoring is going to be a real big deal when you're simplifying trig expressions. So that's my first thought. So I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. So I will factor out a sine squared x. That will leave me parentheses sine squared x minus 1. Then I've got that secant of x that I'll probably need to deal with with that. So I kind of got a thought as to what I might try on this then. Okay. All right. So from here, what I see is if you look at the Pythagorean identity right here, this thing could be rearranged, and we could get both of those sine squares in terms of cosines if we wanted to. And I'm wondering if that's not a good idea because we have a secant, and we know that 1 over secant is cosine. So here's what my thought is. And again, I don't know where it's going to lead me yet, but I'm just going to try it. So again, I'm going to do this in my head. I'm going to take the Pythagorean identity, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, and I can rearrange this in a couple of different ways. One way that I could do this is since this thing right here says sine squared x minus 1, Let's just do it this way. Let's just solve for sine squared. So we would get sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. So in other words, what I'm going to do is where I see sine squared, I'm going to replace it with 1 minus cosine squared and see where it leads me. Okay, so I'm going to change this to 1 minus cosine squared x. I'm going to change this, just the sine, to 1 minus cosine squared x. Then I got the minus 1. And then on this, I'll show you kind of what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to go ahead and do, and do this. We could go ahead and change that to 1 over cosine x if you want to do it that way. Okay? All right, so I think I'll go ahead and do it that way. So here's what I see happening. First of all, the 1s cross out. So what I'm left with is I'm left with 1 minus cosine squared x 
times, and then I'm left with negative cosine squared x, and then I'm left with 1 over so cosine x like that. Now, you can do this in your head. If you want to on this, you could do this. Okay, What you're thinking about is you're really dividing by 1 over cosine. So if you divide by 1 over cosine, what are you really doing? You're really multiplying by cosine of x. So what I could do is you could write this whole thing like this. You could put that in a bracket and multiply that by cosine x like that. Okay, And then we'll see if this leads us anywhere. Um, you know, problems like this are kind of, you can get it down to one trig function, and there might be another way to do this. So we could just multiply that and then probably stop there. So we could have 1 minus cosine squared x here, and then this would be times negative cosine cubed x like that. So if we did that, that might be a, a simpler way to do that. Now, I'm kind of thinking on this, though that I might want to try something different. I just kind of have a suspicion that maybe I could have gone about doing this in a different way. I don't know, though. I think what we could do is we could just multiply this out. And if we multiplied this out, you would have um, basically this. We would have a negative times a positive. You would have negative cosine cubed x. And then negative times negative would be plus cosine to the fifth x like that. That might be one possibility. We got it down to one trig function, and that's about as far as, as we might be able to go. So what I'm going to do is you will get into situations. This may not be the best approach to the problem, and it's going to happen to you, and it happens to me as well. Sometimes you just might try a different way. I'm going to pause this video for just a minute. And you can write this down. To me, this would be an acceptable answer. And I'm going to play with it just for a minute and see if I come up with a little bit better way. Well, I played with it a little bit, and I just kind of ended up getting to the same point. I just had a suspicion that maybe we would end up with something a little simpler than that. <clears throat> but I think that's okay on that. Your, your goal is to try to get it to one trig function, and we did that. Um, because we started off with sines and secants. Now at least we're just down to cosine. And, and you could you know, th write that answer or that answer. They're both the same. So you wouldn't necessarily have to multiply that out. OK, now let's see what we're getting into on this one. So I'm going to erase this and just kind of leave this answer like that. OK, so with this, OK, I see we have a sine. And I see we have a cosine. So one thought on this would be, since I have a cosine squared, remember you have the identity sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So we could turn the cosine into a sine if we just solve this identity for cosine. So notice that the cosine squared x would be 1 minus sine squared x. You can do stuff like that in your head or on scratch paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that numerator with that. So let's write down we have this. We have sine of x plus 1 minus sine squared x. And that whole thing is all over sine x like that. OK, and then let's kind of think about what we might have on this. Then we're down to everything with a sine. There's a couple of ideas that I have. One thing that I could do, we could put that over 1 and get a common denominator. Okay, that would be a, a logical thing to do. So let's work with that a little bit. I'm going to move this down here so I have sine x over 1. And we're going to introduce the common denominator. And then this I'll bring down as 1 minus sine squared x over sine x. And again, I'm trying thoughts that I have. I never really know exactly where these problems are going to go. And you don't really either. So you just try things. So anyway, the common denominator is sine x. So I'm going to multiply by sine x over sine x. Okay. If you've got to combine two fractions, that's usually a good idea on these problems. So this whole thing here, sine times sine, is sine squared over sine x. And then this would be 1 minus sine squared x over sine x. So now I kind of see where this is going. So what I'll have from here then is I'm going to have I'm going to move this thing over the side here, move that out of the way. So we can now just put this over the common denominator. 
And what we would have is sine squared x plus 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, notice what happens on this. This one kind of works out nice. That cancels, that cancels. You're left with 1 over sine x. There is one simpler thing you can do. What is that? Right there. Okay, good. So you would end up having the best answer on this would just be equal to the cosecant of x. So you got it down to one symbol. That previous problem, I just couldn't come up with any way to, to do that any simpler, and that's fine. You know, it doesn't always have to be just one trig function. It probably will most of the time. So that's the idea. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to let you do just the next problem yourself. I'll let you play with that a little bit. And uh, pause if you need to write these down and think about that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and move down, and I'll put the identity sheet there for you. So go ahead and see what you do, and I'll work it out while you're working it out. Okay, so what I got was I got cosine squared theta. I like the way this one worked out. Again, there's more than one way to get there, but what I did in the problem initially was I noticed there was a common factor of cosine that comes out. Okay, that's a third power, that's a first power, you take the lowest out. So when you take that cosine out, notice you'd be left with sine squared plus cosine squared. Well, we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, so that plugs in like that. And once you get that, it's pretty easy to do. Now, you could write the answer almost in your head now. I wrote a couple of steps, so notice you have 1 over secant, so I just wrote this as cosine times 1 over secant, and then 1 over secant gets replaced with cosine. So now cosine times cosine is cosine squared theta. So that's as far as you can take that particular problem is to cosine squared theta. Okay, so hopefully that went well for you. All right, so I'm going to move down to the next thing. There's three major things we do in this section. The next thing is we're going to write an expression in terms of one trig function. Uh, there's a lot of times when this is important. I know that like when I teach calculus 2, depending on, on in, whether any of you are going that route, I, I know that we do this quite a bit when we do what's called integration. So we do some of this in calculus. The other thing is we're going to learn how to verify identities in the last part of this section. So you're going to use this a lot in, in that as well. So the idea is I'm giving you this expression. We want everything to be changed to just cosine. So I'm going to put my identity list over here. As I'm going through this, I'll show you what my thought process is. Okay, so first of all, we want to get everything down to a cosine. So one thing is the tangent is sine over cosine. So I'll probably try that approach. The cotangent is cosine over sine. And then the cosecant can be changed into a sine. There's more than one way to do this. I'm going to show you something that's kind of a nice thing to learn how to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write this like this. I'm going to write this as tangent x plus cotangent x times 1 over cosecant x. So you can look at that whole thing numerator being multiplied by 1. So that thing right there, 1 over cosecant, can be changed to sine. All right, so we're going to do our substitutions. The tangent is sine over cosine. So let's do that. Sine x over cosine x. Again, I don't know where this is going to go. This is just my thought process. Okay, then I've got um, this, and this whole thing's going to be in a parenthesis like this. I should have written that like that in the previous step. Okay, the cotangent I'm going to change to cosine over sine. And don't mix up your variables. So that is cosine x over sine x. Okay, then I'm going to change the cose 1 over cosecant to sine x like this. Then we're going to see where this leads us. Okay, so here's my thought process on this problem. I could, if I distribute, these signs are going to cross out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a distributive property. So when I do that, I'll have sine times sine is sine squared x over cosine x plus, and then when I do this times this, and you can do this stuff in your head, the sines cross out, so that's going to leave you with a cosine x like that. Now remember the goal on this problem is to get it to just a cosine, 
So one more step and we get it to a cosine. And then what we try to do is try to simplify it as much as we can. So the next thing I would look at is this identity. So when I do this identity, and you want to learn to do this in your head, when you see a sine squared pop up like here, a sine squared is just 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, so I'm going to replace this with 1 minus cosine squared x over cosine x plus cosine x. And then I'd probably think about getting a common denominator and seeing what happens. So what I've done is I've accomplished my goal. Everything's in terms of a cosine. But what I want to do is I want to simplify it and see, what, see where it takes me then. Okay, so that's the idea. Now let me work with this a little bit and see what else we can do on this. So I'm going to move this over here. So I have 1 minus cosine squared x over cosine x. And I'm going to get uh, just get a common denominator, so plus cosine x over 1. I'm going to multiply this by cosine x times cosine x to get a common denominator. So that's going to leave me with 1 minus cosine squared x over cosine x plus cosine squared x whoops, over cosine x. Now we can get, the, get a common denominator. So now I like the way this is working out. So I would end up having 1 minus cosine squared x plus cosine squared x all over cosine x. And then notice that those cancel out. So that would be your answer. Okay, You wouldn't want to change that to a secant because that's not what the problem says. So you would end up getting basically then a 1 over cosine x. Okay, so again, you want to get it down to as few symbols as possible before you put this together then and simplify. Okay, so that's probably as far as you can take that. Okay, uh, there's possibly an other ways to do that. To me, that's the logical way to, to try that problem. Okay, the next problem what we're going to do is we're going to write the expression in terms of a cosecant. So let me zoom out on this just a little bit. I do want to as I'm doing these problems, I want to always display the identities. So you can pause if you need to on this. So I'm going to go ahead and start with part B here. Okay. All right. So we're going to change everything to a cosecant. So let me think about this one for a minute then. I'm going to go ahead and let's write down 1 over 1 minus cosine x uh, minus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. Now the thing is, if you have a cosine, there's not much you can do with a cosine. You can change it to 1 over secant, but that's not really going to do you any good because ultimately you're going to try to work it into a cosecant. So cosecants are related to a sine, so I think we could use this identity and maybe try to get everything in terms of a sine, then we could change it to a cosecant. So my thought on this is let's get a common denominator and let's see where that leads us. So I'm going to multiply the first fraction by 1 plus cosine x and I'm going to multiply the second one by 1 minus cosine x and then that way that will give me my common denominator. Okay, so I kind of have a thought of where this might lead then. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply out these denominators also when I do that. So this numerator here just becomes 1 plus cosine x. If you multiply out the FOIL here, you would get 1 minus cosine squared x. Those are conjugates. The inner term cancels out. You go to the next fraction, we would have, I'm just going to bring that minus down. I would have this. I would have cosine x minus cosine squared x like that, and then I'm going to multiply that denominator out again and get 1 minus cosine squared x. Okay, so now I can put this in one fraction and see what happens. Now when you do this, you have to be really careful about this, how this sign is affected by that minus sign. So you'd end up having 1 plus cosine x minus cosine x plus cosine squared x all over 1 minus cosine squared x. Okay, see I distributed that negative through to get minus and plus. Okay, what I notice on this is that's going to cancel out. 
So what we're going to be left with is 1 plus cosine squared x over 1 minus cosine squared x. All right, now we're going to change this into a sine before we change it into a cosecant. Okay, so again, it's all going to have to do with this identity right here. And again, learn to do this in your head. What I'm going to do on this is I'll show you a couple of approaches. I'm going to write this down, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. Okay, well, if I move the, the cosine, I get sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. So this thing right here, 1 minus cosine squared x, is the same thing as sine squared x. So my next step, I'll just write that as sine squared x. Okay, on this, I really can't do anything with the cosine on the numerator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this approach. So I'm going to look at, again, the same identity. And I'm going to erase this and just kind of show you what I did here. Uh, I can move the sine over there, so I would get cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So what I'm going to do is change the cosine squared to 1 minus sine squared. Okay, so now I'm down to this point here, and then we want to kind of see what we can do. Okay, well, there's more than one way to do this problem, and I'm going to show you what my thought process is on this. It's not a bad idea sometimes to split these things up. I can actually write this as 1 over sine squared x minus sine squared x over sine squared x like that. Okay, and again, I'll be done with the problem once I do this, because notice that part right there gives you a 1. And then this part right here, it's really 1 over sine x squared, but 1 over sine x is cosecant. So this becomes cosecant squared x minus 1. So that is as far as you can take that problem. That's how that worked out. Okay, I had no idea what it would turn out to. I just kind of looked at ideas and and went with it. And that's what you're going to deal with in these sections, is you are definitely going to deal with working with these things a little bit until you can get them simplified and down to the trig function you're interested in. Okay, so that's how that goes. All right, now I think the next one, I'm going to zoom in on this just a little bit here. Uh, you can pause if you need to pause and think about what I did, and I'm going to move this over here and zoom in on my work here and see what we can do on this next problem then. Okay, um, that's not really what I wanted to do, I don't think. Let's go back and let me just do this like this. I'm just going to kind of di write down the identities as I go because I want to leave the solution to the last problem up for you. All right, so let's see kind of what we have on this and see where this goes. We're going to write this whole entire thing in terms of a tangent. So when we get an answer to this, we want it to just say tangent. Okay, so let me see. I, again, I don't got much of an idea what's going to happen on this. I'm going to basically foil this thing out. This is foil, so I'm going to go ahead and see where this leads me. So I'm going to do secant times sine, and I'm just going to write it as secant x sine x, then outside term secant times cosine x, and then that middle term will be plus cosecant x sine x, and then the last term is cosecant x times cosine of x. Okay, then I've got still got the minus 2 minus cotangent x. Okay, so that's what I got so far. So I just foiled. That's all I've done so far, and we'll see where this leads us. Okay, so here's what I see on the problem. I can, work, I can change the secant to 1 over cosine. Uh, I can do the same thing there. I can change the cosecant to 1 over sine. Cosecant to 1 over sine. And I can change tangent, cotangent to tangent, because ultimately what I'm trying to do is get everything changed to a tangent. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to write this as 1 over cosine x times sine x. 
I'm going to write this as 1 over cosine x times cosine x. I'm going to write the cosecant as 1 over sine x times sine x. Then I'm going to change the uh, cosecant to um, 1 over sine x times cosine x. And then I'm going to change this to, um, I'm just going to leave it at cotangent. I, there's a reason why I'm going to do that. And it takes a lot of experience to see things on these problems. I just happened to see something on this. Okay, so what this is going to be is this is going to be sine x over cosine x. This thing right here, that's going to be a 1. That thing right there is also going to be a 1. All right, because they cancel out. Then we're going to have a cosine x over sine x. And then I've got a minus 2 minus cotangent x. All right, just substituting equals for equals. Okay, what's sine over cosine? That's tangent. 1 plus 1 is 2. What's cosine over sine? Cotangent x. Man, look at the way this sucker is working out. Okay, look at that. Okay, so what happens is, boom, 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 boom. Who would have thought? The answer is tangent of x. Okay, so I had no idea it was going to work out that way. I just started playing with it, and that's what came out. I like the way that one worked out. That's kind of nice. Okay, all right, let's look at the next one. Again, always pause anytime you need to. So I'm going to work this one out and see where this one leads me then. Okay, this time they want you to have your answer with a secant and a tangent. Okay, it might not even be possible to get this just down to one trig function. So when I see something like this, I, I think common denominator. I got two fractions, so my thought is going to be let's just get a common denominator, work that out and see where it begins to lead us. Okay, I can't really think of anything else I can do at the beginning of this problem. So the first thing is you got to understand what is the common denominator. Those are two different expressions. The common denominator is going to be both of these things together. So 1 plus sine x, we're going to multiply that by 1 minus sine x. And we're going to do the same thing to the numerator. We always have to do that. Okay, and then this one we got to multiply by 1 plus sine x. Use parentheses too, like I'm doing here. That's important and then 1 plus sine x like that. Okay, so you just got to write that down and get your common denominator step in there. It's kind of hard to do all this in your head. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to just probably FOIL all this stuff out and see what happens. Okay, so if I FOIL out the numerator, I'm going to focus just on this right now, and let's write the result of that. So you can do this in your head. You'd have 1 for the first term, minus sine x for the outside term, minus sine x for the inside term, and then a negative times a negative or a positive sine squared x for the last term. Okay, the denominator, that's a conjugate. It's a difference of two squares, so you can take a shortcut. 1 times 1 is 1. Sine x times sine x is 1 minus sine squared x. You want to make sure you understand that the inner and outer cancel in that situation. Then we have that minus sign, so I got that. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to multiply this out. That's FOIL. Okay, first term, 1 times 1 is 1. Outside term is sine x. Inside term is another sine x. Last term is a sine squared x. And then again, the denominator is the same thing. We already multiplied that out in the previous thing, so that's going to be 1 minus sine squared x like that. All right, that'd be my thought on how to start the problem, and let's just kind of see what we're left with here. So this numerator would be, those are like terms, so you have negative 2 sine x plus sine squared x, okay, all over 1 minus sine squared x, and then over here, same thing, these are like terms, so we have 1 plus 2 sine x plus sine squared x, all over 1 minus sine squared x like that. Okay, now it's real important when you put these together, that uh, subtraction symbol right there is going to distribute and change all those signs. 
So now I'm going to put this into our common denominator. I'm just going to write down the numerator, 1 minus 2 sine x plus sine squared x, change signs carefully, minus 1, minus 2 sine x, minus sine squared x, all over 1 minus sine squared x like that. Okay, now when we do this, what do you see happening in the numerator? All right, you have two cancellations. The ones cancel, and it looks like the sine squareds cancel. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up here, and then we'll see where this leads us. So we'll have, looks like we have a, those are like terms, so that would be negative 4 sine x all over 1 minus sine squared x. Now, you got to remember, we're trying to change this to a secant and a tangent. So this takes a lot of practice. Here's what, I, here's what I would suggest. Okay, we have this identity right here. So I'm going to just move the sign over there. So I get cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. All right, so I'm going to change this thing right here to what it's equal to, the cosine. So what I'll end up having is I'm going to end up having negative 4 sine x all over cosine squared x. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to write this as negative 4 sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x. All right, now what's going to happen is this becomes a tangent, and that becomes a secant. So you would have negative 4 tangent x times secant x. I can think of times in, uh, in, in a calculus class where, where we do this all the time, okay, when we do what's called integration. So that would be as far as you could take that particular problem. Okay. All right, pause if you need to. Okay, these problems take some, some time and some effort to get this down. All right, so let's go to the next thing. I'm going to let you work a little bit on the stuff on the next page. So if you go to the next page, I'll get this set up for you. We're going to do uh, two problems. I'm going to zoom out on this just a little bit and display the identities as you're working on those two. And then I'll work on them, and you may do them differently than I do. But we really should come to the same answer. Okay, so take a look at what I did here and see what you think. The first one I got 1 over cosine x. So we were just wanting to get this down to nothing but a cosine and simplified. And the second one, I got tangent x secant x. Okay, I'll run through them a little bit. Anytime, if you've got them, you can move on. So I got one more part of this section. So let me explain what I did. Um, so what I did on this one is I went ahead and just changed the tangent to sine over cosine. So I just brought cosine over 1 plus sine x down. And then sine over, change tangent to sine over cosine. I got a common denominator, so I multiply this by cosine and that by 1 plus sine x. That's the key. All right, multiply cosine times cosine is cosine squared. I'm going to leave that factored. Then I do this, sine times 1 is sine. Sine times sine is sine squared. Then I put it in one fraction. So I have cosine squared plus sine x plus sine squared x all over this. And then I want you to notice that Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Now, see, I left that factored because I thought that something might cancel. So I just left that alone. That cancels. When that cancels, you're left with 1 over cosine x. Okay, you may have done it a different way. And sometimes you go in circles on these problems. You just have to try stuff. And if it didn't get anywhere, try something else. Okay, that to me would be the logical way to go about doing that problem. Okay, the next one, what I did in my first step is I just changed the cosecant to 1 over sine. Everything else stayed the same. This is what's called a complex fraction. So since that creates a denominator, I'm going to multiply by sine over sine to get rid of that. So what I did is I distribute sine times 1 is sine. Sine times 1 over sine is sine over sine. Sine times sine is sine squared. So I'm doing a distributive property. you got to see that. That'll be 1 now, so I've got sine over 1 minus sine squared. Okay, the identity 1 minus sine squared x becomes cosine squared x. 
and then I just write this as sine over cosine times 1 over cosine. Why did I do that? Because I know that becomes tangent, and this becomes secant. All right, so that's how I did that then. All right, so we're going to look at verifying identities to, to polish up the section here. Okay, so we're going to talk about verifying identities. A lot of what we're doing is leading up to this. And um, so these are just some general guidelines that you can read through. I'm going to go on and go to the next page and give you an example of what a proof should look like. Students, a lot of times when they learn how to do this, their paper, they tend to write not very neatly and coherently. So this is kind of what I want your uh, proof to look like. Now, I'm not going to go over the steps of this. You can run through and think about that if you want to. This is a fairly long proof. But what you're trying to do is this is an identity, which just means you have an equation. This side is the same as this side. So what you do is you always write down a side. I always say pick the side that is the most complicated because it's easier to take something compl complicated and make it simple than vice versa generally. So you write that down. Now the thing is, I, that's all I want, and then I want equal signs all the way down your paper until you get to the other side. So what you're going to notice is there's your complicated side. If you do the proof correctly, you'll end up with the other side. Okay. So what we do on this is we just kind of substitute equals for equals throughout here, and that'll come out. I'm just using this as a guideline. This is how your proof needs to look. You don't need to have stuff all over your paper. And any scratch work, you don't even need to show that. You know, you can just do your scratch work at the side, but you want to have the key steps in here. Okay. So a couple of things on here. These are kind of my key things. Write down one side and the equal sign to begin with. Always start the problem that way. Keep bringing down the equal sign in a column. You should end up with the other side. There's some steps you can do it in your head if they're simple and obvious. And man, make sure that your work is neat and it's easy for me to see. And a lot of times students sometimes will just write stuff out and boom, out comes the other side with no logical reason. So every step's got to be logical and mathematical. You're just using identities uh, to verify. Some proofs are simple and only take a step or two. Some take a whole page of paper. And it just depends on how you do it and what situation you're getting yourself into. All right, so I'm going to go to the next page here. And again, I will I like to kind of use these identities as we go through. So I'll show you how you want to do your proof. You always want to start this way. Just write the word proof and write the most complicated side and write an equal sign. And don't start the problem any other way than this way. Start that way. Now, you're going to make that equal sign go all the way down the paper until you end up with the other side. Okay? What you do in these steps is up to you. Okay? But I'm going to use identity. So, a lot of times you just do basic algebra. So, what I'm going to do on this is uh, distribute. So, I'm going to write that as cosine theta, tangent theta, plus cosine theta, cotangent theta. So I'm going to start that way. And then, of course, I just keep writing the equal sign. Then I start thinking about identities. Okay, I see a tangent, a tangent sine over cosine. So I'm going to replace that. I'm going to bring down the cosine and change the tangent to sine theta over cosine theta. I'm going to do the same thing with the cotangent. The cotangent is cosine over sine. So I'm going to write this as cosine theta times cosine theta over sine theta. All right, now I'm going to see if there's anything that happens. Well, one thing that happens is that crosses out, so that'll give me sine theta. I'm going to put that over 1. And then over here, I've got cosine times cosine is cosine squared theta over sine theta like that. Okay, now I've got two fractions I need to get a common denominator for. Okay, so the common denominator between 1 and sine is sine, so I need to multiply this by sine theta times sine theta. Okay, when I do that, I'm going to have sine squared theta over sine theta plus cosine squared theta 
over sine theta. All right, now what I'm ready to do is you're ready to put this in a fraction, so in a common denominator, so you would just have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta all over sine theta. Okay, well, what's that equal to? That's equal to 1 over sine theta. Therefore, that's equal to cosecant theta. Okay, so I'm just doing identities. I'm substituting equals for equals. Notice equal signs all the way down the paper until I reach the other side. That's it. That's how your proof should look. It shouldn't look any other way than that. Okay, always pause on these things if you need to go through and see what I did on any step on that. Again, I'm doing identities and just referring as I go. All right, so I'm going to move this over. Okay, and then I'll display, I'll move the identities over a little bit, and let's see where the next one takes us. Okay, so again, with this one, I would always just write down the word proof, write down the most complicated side, which is clearly the left-hand side, and then we'll see where this leads us. Okay, write an equal sign. Start the problem that way, don't start it any other way. Now I'm going to do this with a um, with an identity. I'm going to do a distributive property first. Um, this is kind of my idea on this. Uh, and let's see. There's a couple of ideas I have on this, actually. Uh, you could distribute. And let's do it that way. I think you'll probably understand it better that way. I had another thought. But let's just say that's cosine squared theta plus cosine squared theta times tangent squared theta, okay? So what I'm going to do is I just did a distributive property. Then what you want to see is the tangent is the sine over cosine, okay? Well, really, you, once you have an identity, if the tangent sine over cosine, then tangent squared theta is just sine squared theta over cosine squared theta because you can square both sides of an equation. So what you would get is you would end up getting here, you would have cosine squared theta, so I'm just going to bring that down, keep bringing that equal sign down, and I'm going to change this to cosine squared theta times sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Okay, that's going to cause this to cancel and that to cancel. So I love the way this proof's working out. So I've got cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. Well, if you look at that, that's equal to 1. doesn't matter what order those two things are in. That's 1, so that's your proof. So that one was pretty simple. Okay, just kind of short and simple that way. There's more than one way to do that problem, but that would be a simple way to verify that that identity is true. Okay. All right, I'm going to slide over here now. Okay, so I'm going to move this up here a little bit. And let's think about what we're doing on the next one. Okay, so with this one, uh, I'm going to write down the word proof going to pick the most complicated side, which to me is pretty clearly the left side. So I'll have secant theta over cosecant theta plus sine theta over cosine theta. And then write your equal sign. Don't do anything different. Always start the problem that way. Okay, now we got to start thinking about what we can do in this problem. So I have a couple of thoughts. And the thing that I see on this is this. This part right here, you can flip-flop these things. You're not doing a reciprocal. It's just that when you have secant, secant is 1 over cosine. So you could change that to 1 over cosine theta. And then this is really 1 over cosecant. So 1 over uh, cosecant is sine. So I'm going to change that part to sine theta. You could just write that as sine theta over cosine theta. So secant is 1 over cosine. 1 over cosecant is sine. And then I'm just going to bring this thing down here. Uh, so I'm doing that and doing that. And this is going to be a real simple proof. This part is going to be sine theta over cosine theta. That part's also sine theta over cosine theta. Okay, any thoughts? Okay, what do you know about the sign, let me, i got to plug in my computer, it's about to die, so hold on. Okay, forgot to plug my computer in. Okay, so what do you notice? What's sine over cosine? It's tangent, yeah, okay, so you would end up having 
tangent theta plus tangent theta. Those are like terms. One plus one is two, so you get two tangent theta. That's what you were trying to prove. Straight down the paper, equal signs all line up. That's, again, the way your proof needs to look. Okay, so let's see what we're getting ourselves into on the next problem here. Okay, this one is something that if you didn't know a little trick, if you don't look at this the right way, you could just go in circles on this one. So it really doesn't matter which side you start with on this problem. That really doesn't make any difference. Uh, so I'm going to start with uh, the right, the, the left side. Okay, it doesn't really matter. The proof would look the same either way. And there's a couple of things on this that you got to be careful about. So here's what I know. Now remember, you can do algebra on this. What I know is the relationship, the link between a cosine and a secant is this. That's going to be the key identity that you're going to use is that. Now, if you didn't think of this trick, like I said, you might just, you might never get this. So what I'm going to do in my first step is I'm going to, I'm really going to divide all, everything by a cosine. Okay, so in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the numerator by 1 over cosine theta, and I'm going to do the same thing to the denominator. Okay, because what I know is 1 over cosine is secant, and I'm trying to change these cosines into secants. So when I do this, I'm doing a distributive property. You do this in your head. You do this times this. That would be cosine theta over cosine theta. This way, that would be 1 over cosine theta. And same thing here, distributive property. This times this is cosine theta over cosine theta. And then this times this is minus 1 over cosine theta. So you got to make sure you understand that, how that distributed through there. Now it's actually very easy. Okay, What's cosine over cosine? 1. What's 1 over cosine? 1 over cosine is secant. So that becomes plus secant theta, like we wanted. Same thing happens to denominator. That's 1. 1 over cosine is secant. Problem done. Okay, that's got a little trick on it. I mean, that's the way to do that. You have to look for those little tricks in these problems when you do these. Okay, so let's see. You're gonna, I'm going to put you to work and see what you can do. These problems take time and practice. Pause if you need to on those problems, and I'm going to let you do the next four proofs yourself. Now, what I'm going to do while I'm pausing the video, I'm going to go ahead and work these out. And you might have more than one proof on here. You may have something that's correct. You'll know if you're doing it right as long as you understand the algebra on this. Okay, so, okay, so I'll let you look at my proofs for a few minutes here and see how I did them. I, and again, you may have done it totally different, and it may be, uh, still may be right. Um, so this is just kind of what I thought on the first one. I decided, well, I'm just going to, Instead of foiling it, and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you foiled it, but what I did is I did this. And let me show you my the I, something on these identities here so you can see my identity list. So this is what I noticed, that, okay, if you move the cosine, 1 minus cosine becomes sine. So I replaced that with that. Also notice that 1 plus cotangent is cosecant. So 1 plus cotangent turns into cosecant. Proof's real easy once you do that. Now it would be sine squared. Cosecant squared is 1 over sine squared, okay, because you know that uh, this identity here, you would get, if you squared both sides, you get cosecant equals 1 over sine squared. Get that? They cancel. It's equal to 1. That's how, that's how you could do it. If you foiled, I wouldn't be surprised if you would have got there. It may not have been as simple as my proof, but again, you know, when you see 1 plus cotangent, this identity right there kind of jumps right out at you. It's real helpful if you see that. Okay, uh, the next one I did is this. I started with this side. Uh, you probably could go with the other side. I just decided to go this route and see what happens. So I changed uh, cosecant is 1 over sine. Cotangent is uh, cosine over sine. 
And I've already got a common denominator. That's why I did that, see? So I've got 1 minus cosine over sine. Now this is, you know, I really didn't even have to do that <laughs> now that I look at this. You know, I'm going to, you could do this. I don't know why I did this. It's not necessary because I split it back up anyway. So actually, all I really needed to do was once I do that, then this becomes cosecant. And that becomes cotangent, and you're done. It's a two-step proof. That's it. I, don't, I, did, I added some extra steps that I didn't even need to do on that. So that's how that one should go. All right, so sometimes you find an easy way to do them. Sometimes you don't, okay? So let's look at the next page. And I think these two, I, I found fairly simple ways to do these next two. So let me just kind of go through what I did on this. So I showed a proof like this on the previous page. So if I'm going to change the tangent into a cotangent, what's beneficial is I started with the left side and I multiplied the top and bottom by 1 over tangent. When I did that, distribute, that becomes 1 over tangent. This becomes tangent over tangent. And the bottom, distribute, 1 over tangent, tangent over tangent. 1 over tangent is cotangent. Tan over tan is 1. So then you got your proof. That's it. Okay, let's see what I did on the next one. I definitely started with the left side, since it's more complicated. And I did these things. The tangent got replaced with sine over cosine. I left the cosine alone. And the cosecant got changed to 1 over sine. Okay, cosines cross out, leaving you sine. Over here, one of the sines crosses out. You can do this in your head. Sine squared x over sine x just means sine x times sine x over sine x, so one of them cancels. You don't have to write that down. You can do stuff like that on scratch paper, but it doesn't need to be a part of your proof. So I get sine plus sine is two sine, and you're done. Okay, these are pretty straightforward proofs right here. Okay, these are all kind of what I want you to do. I'm going to do a few more that might be a little more advanced than these to finish this section up then. Okay, so I'm going to go on down to, to this. And then I think I'll, I'm going to do two problems and let you do a, a couple to finish up this section. Okay, so I'm going to do this one this way. I'm going to start with the left-hand side because it's more complex. So let's start by just writing down 1 minus sine squared theta over 1 plus cosine theta. Okay, the only thing I can really think to do on this, I have a couple of thoughts on this that I could do, but probably getting a common denominator will be what we'll do in this problem. Okay, I think I'm going to go that route. Um, another thing we could do is we could approach it this way. Now, I could put the 1 over 1 and get a common denominator and see where it leads us, or we could use this identity. I think actually I'm going to go this route, just kind of in your head. When you move that over, you're going to have sine squared theta becomes 1 minus cosine squared theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to this. So I'm, when I write my equal sign, I'm going to say 1 minus, and then, just, then I'm going to have in my fraction 1 minus cosine squared theta over 1 plus cosine theta. Okay, so I'm going to do that first when I do that. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to factor. This is a difference of two squares, so this part here, that numerator factors. So I'm going to bring down the 1, keep bringing your equal sign down, and then this factors like this. This factors as 1 plus cosine theta, 1 minus cosine theta. That is a difference of two squares that you learn how to do in algebra classes. And I'm going to leave the 1 plus cosine theta like that. So I think this is going to be a pretty nice, simple proof if you see this. So what's going to happen is that's going to cross out. I'm left with 1 minus parentheses, 1 minus cosine theta. That's going to be 1 minus 1 plus cosine theta when you distribute the negative. 1's cancel out. Problem done. Okay, that's pretty slick. And it takes a lot of experience to see some of the things I see. And I don't always see the simpler ways to do those. Sometimes I run in circles and 
uh, wad up my paper and try something else. And you're going to have to do the same thing sometimes. Okay, so that's all that would go. Okay, the next one, let's see. Let's work with the left side. It's probably easier that way. So I'm going to write down secant alpha minus cosine alpha over secant alpha plus cosine alpha. And then we're going to try to rearrange that and get that into um, uh, sine squared alpha over 1 plus cosine squared alpha. Okay, again, you just have to run with ideas, okay? I think the idea that most students would probably see, um, you know, I can think of a couple of ways to go about this problem, so I'm going to go the way that I think most students would do, is I'm going to just apply that identity. Okay, so let's change that secant to 1 over cosine theta, uh, alpha. Leave the cosine alone. And then the denominator, same thing, change that to 1 over cosine alpha plus cosine alpha like that. Okay, so see, now I've got, I'm trying to get cosines, and uh, I'll end up getting a sine there somehow. The next thing that you could do, and you can combine it in this step, is you have a complex fraction. And this is something students are, tend to be kind of weak at in this section. You just want cosine to go away. So you can multiply the numerator by cosine alpha, as long as you multiply the denominator by cosine alpha, okay? And you can do all this in your head. I'm going to show you I'm doing distributive property. So when I do this times this, that's cosine alpha over cosine alpha. This is cosine squared alpha, like that. Go to the bottom, same thing. That will become cosine over cosine. Don't leave off your variables. It drives me crazy when I see students do that. Leave your variable there. Don't just do a cosine or just don't do a sine. I always tell students a sine without an angle is a sin. So don't sin. Okay? Always have that angle there. All right, now I go this way. All right, do that. That's going to be plus cosine squared alpha. All right, now let's see what we get here. So it looks like what I'm going to get is 1 minus cosine squared alpha, then I've got 1 plus cosine squared alpha. It's always good to pause and see where you're going. We're going here. Notice that we've got the denominator. And then this is, when you look at this identity, the Pythagorean identity, if you move the cosine, you get 1 minus cosine is sine. So then you're done with your proof. So that becomes sine squared alpha over 1 plus cosine squared alpha. Then you're done. So that's how that goes, all right? That's a little bit more advanced proof on this. Got a little bit more going on on that. Okay, so uh, pause if you need to process this and think through this. Then I'm going to have you run to the next page and try to do two more proofs, and then that'll finish this up. Okay, so I'm going to have you work on these two. I'm going to place the identities there so you can refer to the identities if you need to. And I will pause, and uh, when you're ready to check, I'll show you how I Okay, so let's check here. Now, there was something wrong with number two. I figured that out. Number two was probably either supposed to be one over cosine or secant theta. So I must have typed that wrong when I took, I took that out of a book. So I'm going to display on here what I got on these two and just kind of run through these so you can look at this. All right, so I'm going to talk through this a little bit. If you got these, okay, but that one should have been a secant. Theta. I'm going to show you something on the graphing calculator on that, too, and I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that I that this was not cosine. So what I did, you can tell if something's an identity graphically. It doesn't prove anything, but visually you can tell. So I put in tan theta plus cosine over 1 plus sine theta. I just put that in y1 like that, just typed it in like that. I did a window from negative 2 pi to 2 pi, negative 4 to 4. I just kind of did a, a standard window we use in trig. And when I graphed it, that is the secant graph. Okay, like if I went to y2 and I put in the cosine of x, I'll show you. Okay, the cosine is this. So if you put in graph the left side and the right side of the identity, they should be the same graph. They're clearly not the same graph, and clearly the graph of that left side is the secant 
Okay, so that's kind of something I think is kind of worth seeing on there uh, when you begin to look at that. Okay. All right, so let's see. Let's look at what I did on the first one. And the first one has a lot of steps, but it's not too hard. Okay, I changed tangent to sine over cosine. I changed cotangent to cosine over sine. I changed tangent to sine over cosine, cotangent to, to cosine over sine. And then you still have that plus 2 cosecant squared theta on the left-hand part. All right, so I got rid of the fraction. So what I did is since I have a sine and cosine, I need to multiply by sine cosine. You can do this step in your head and bypass this next step if you want to. So you would have sine squared cosine over cosine, and then you'd have sine cosine squared over sine theta, or sine u. Then you'd have sine squared u cosine over cosine, and then sine u cosine squared u over sine u. All these cancellations happen, so you're going to have sine squared minus cosine squared, over sine squared plus cosine squared u, and then keep bringing down that plus 2 cosine squared u. That's a part of the problem. Actually, for once you get to this step, it's pretty simple. That becomes 1. We know sine squared plus cosine is 1. Cosine squared is 1. So we just have sine squared minus cosine squared u plus the 2 cosine squared u. These are like terms. So negative cosine squared plus 2 gives you that. And sine squared plus cosine squared u is 1. So that's how that works out. Okay, the next one, what I did was I did this. I, I changed the tangent to sine over cosine. Then I got a common denominator, which is 1 plus sine cosine. So I multiplied the left fraction by 1 plus sine and the right one by cosine. Distributive property, I have sine plus sine squared over that denominator and then cosine squared over that denominator. Then I put it together in one fraction, now that I have the common denominator. So I have sine plus sine squared plus cosine squared over that denominator. Notice this part right here becomes 1. And then we would have sine theta plus 1 over cosine theta times 1 plus sine theta. Well, uh, sine theta plus 1 is the same as 1 plus sine theta. It doesn't matter what order you add two numbers, so that cancels. Leaves you 1 over cosine, so you're supposed to get a secant. Okay? All right, that'll wrap it up. Uh, just study over this if you need to, to study through that, and hopefully that'll go very well for you. These problems take some practice, like anything else. Good luck on your homework. Have fun.